traffic on a national and international level was the Flint water crisis. And my kids swam locally at the, the YMCA swimming pool um, in Flint. I was a member of the board of directors for Flint YMCA and we had a big problem. And it took a lot out of the community, but we were Flint strong as we always like to say, and uh, we were able to overcome it. We made a lot of changes, a lot of things happened in that part of the world. And it's something that we just can't ignore anymore. We have to address the issues of health and safety when it comes to infrastructure. And Hammerhead, we take a lot of pride in listening to voice of the customer, taking a look at what's happening in the world and answering the call. And one of the things we did in the last year was we brought Hydra Slitter to the market. So here's Hydra Slitter. Do you know what is in your water? There are as many as 10 million lead water services in the United States today. As treatment processes of water change, lead pipes can begin to break down, causing particles to be found in our water. Replacement is costly and disruptive, but ingesting those particles can be dangerous to your health. Introducing Hydra Slitter, exclusively by Hammerhead Trenchless. Hydra Slitter easily replaces lead water services with new services, free of harmful particles. Once the water service has been turned off and the pipe has been accessed, Hydra Slitter, an easy to connect kit, will begin to slit the lead service and pull in new water service. Attach the new water service to the water main and the water meter. Turn back on the water knowing it is free of lead particles. To learn more about this product, go to hammerheadshop.com. So as we looked at it, you know, 10 million services, that's quite a bit. Well, the EPA has taken note and they're mandating at municipal level that they need to map out and identify where all these lead services are in each of their communities and must complete that by the end of 24. So that's pretty coming up pretty quick, but just because they identified them, there's the next stage of this whole process, which is how do they get them out of service? And that's where we come in and assisting and putting businesses in place to be a part of that solution. And I've got Josh Hood here with me. Uh, he was part of the original development of this product as our product manager. And Josh, why don't we tell everyone what we built here, give us kind of the why and how this works. Okay, so when we first started this project, we had heard through the industry that the lead had to be removed from the ground. Remove the lead, remove the lead. And so that was the path we went down. We were trying to find ways to grab a hold of the lead and, and jerk it out of the ground some way or another. And we just could not be successful on a regular basis just because the stuff is so soft. So when we started asking more and more questions, the remove the lead meant we had to remove it from service, not actually remove it from the ground. So that changed our approach. So then we went back to some of our old pipe bursting technology on that same path technology, but we're gonna try to slit this. And we tried multiple different blade versions and different ways to do it. We finally landed on something that we've been very successful with and, that, and that's the Hydra Slitter. So are we zoomed in? All right, so if you look at the very front here, we have this really, really sharp flexi blade. It's a patented blade and it's flexi because it does have a round nose on it and the, all the tooling behind it does as well. And that allows that to follow that same path, te paint, same path technology because um, there's gonna be natural bends and waves in this pipe just from the, the uh, original installation but it's going to cut it. And then behind that, you'll see the, this cone, that's the expander cone. That's going to op give the initial opening of the lead. We have a separation tube just to create some distance before the big expander starts really opening that lead up. If that was too close to the blade, it would stretch it out and not allow the blade to cut. And then that will also open up the ground enough to allow for our tracer wires so it can be located again in the future along with our new product pipe. So when they're doing, when they're, when a contractor's pulling this in place, how are they, what are they grabbing on the cable and using, what are they doing? That's exactly what they're doing. We have a custom cable. It's a quarter inch swage cable that's then braised to a three eighths cable. So we can use a small cable to feed down that line, which is always tough to do from tuberculation. And then they can use that cable to pull on the bigger three eighths cable, which is actually going to do our work. We'll put a cable grip on here and then we'll use our excavator that we dug the hole with to drag that out of the ground. Literally, this takes only a few moments once the setup and everything's in place, but you're opening up the ground at the meter as well as the curb stop, correct? Correct. Or you might be in some, you might be going through a basement wall where you would chip out the basement wall and launch all the tooling from inside the basement all the way to the street. What about if you're finding dissimilar pipes or couplings or different things along the lines? Is, is that going to be a problem or what are we going to do? It's always a problem. So if you hit a coupler, chances are you'll slit this lead up until you hit that coupler. At that point, it will likely stop. It's just what it is. So you have two options. Either you can continue pulling, which the lead may come out of the ground, 
but if you can't pull that hard, you're gonna have to measure how much cable you have left and do an open cut and get that coupler out of there to continue on your way. But once you pull the new system in place and we get that letter in, in terminated, so to speak, and take it out of commission, we got a new water main and we can move on to the next one and the next one and the next one, correct? Absolutely. And you're seeing this trend across the country. There's been multiple municipalities offering money and, local, and especially communities around our house. Um, they're offering maybe $6,000 if you do it in the next two years that they'll help contribute towards the price of replacing it. Other places are adding it onto the tax bill over a period of time and offering maybe $2,000 of money up front. They're just multiple programs, but we're seeing it come at us every day from all these different communities. Well, they're here to see a demonstration. So why don't we get this thing fired up, Josh, and, and show them how this works. So we're gonna fire this up. So as I start pulling out, you're gonna see this cable load up. Everything's okay. gonna come into a bind. That blade's gonna slit and then watch how the rest of it just opens and expands from there. So we're simulating earth here. So go ahead and start it. But this is simulating like earth load and all that stuff. So the soil around it, whether it's rocky, sandy, it doesn't matter. You're gonna just, it's gonna start engaging. Correct. And a lot of the ground conditions change how much force it takes to do this. If your ground is really wet and clay and really slippery, there's a good chance that as this starts happening, it might slid away and then it might come out of the ground. Um, if it's in there really tight, it's not going to come out of the ground and it's going to slit. You're going to see exactly what you're seeing right here. So it's slitting the pipe. It's like butterflying it wide open and I'm watching the expanders. They're opening that pipe up and then that spacing is just giving it that chance for that bigger that bigger expander to really open it up so you can pull in that new service. Correct. If this big expander is too close to the blade, like I said, it'll stretch the lead so far up high that it won't let the blade actually cut through. So, so we just have to space it out a little bit. So literally this is as fast as the excavator can pull it. Yeah, this will, once you start slitting, this process takes a minute. And you just so keep backing up and going. So it literally takes longer to open up the earth and thread the needle, so to speak. This is the easy part. This is the easy part. Yep. That's pretty darn cool. So I'm looking at this as this is going on, but a lot of the individuals here are watching this for the first time. How do they get their hands on this, Josh? Because this looks too easy. It is too easy. I'm plugged that quick. Um, so you can order this on a Hammerhead Shop site. So hammerheadshop.com. There's a computer set up in the back. If somebody wants to place an order here at the show, you can have products sitting at your house before you get home. We're also offering a show special, so you can save up to 20% on some of the hydrosilter kits. But if you want to learn more about it when we're done, come up, ask all the questions you want, grab somebody in a black shirt. We have a whole display over there that we can walk through each and every step if need be. Perfect. Well, we appreciate everyone's time today here. And, and uh, probably as the day wraps up here at the wet show, uh, we'll be doing some demos tomorrow as well. But Everyone, thank you for stopping by and uh, enjoy the rest of the wet show today. Thank you.